We have announced our plans to replace the F-16s, which will face obsolescence post-2030 with the F-35s. This will mean that the RSAF fighter fleet will consist of F-35 and F-15SGs if plans come to fruition a decade or so from now. As stated previously, MINDEF will issue a letter of request, a LOR, to the U.S. to acquire F-35s. As required by U.S. law for foreign military sales, the U.S. Congress must approve the sale of F-35s. Our LOR will request an initial acquisition of four F-35s with the option of a subsequent eight if we decide to proceed. Singapore has the endorsement of both the United States Administration and the Department of Defense for our proposed purchase of F-35s, but the Congress must still approve it. In fact, President Trump wrote to Prime Minister Lee last month welcoming Singapore's plans to acquire the F-35. During my meeting with Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan at the Munich Security Conference two weeks ago, he also said that the U.S. was greatly appreciative of Singapore's decision and his department supported it. A word on price. The price of F-35s has been steadily falling due to the healthy orders from the U.S. and 10 other countries, including the U.K., Italy, Australia, Japan, and South Korea. DSTA's assessment is that now is an opportune time to put in Singapore's requests. The current unit price of the F-35 ranges from US 90 million to US 150 million per aircraft, comparable to what we have paid for our F-15 SGs. The total cost of ownership of a fleet of F-35s, including maintenance across its lifespan, will also be similar to our F-15 SGs. Nonetheless, F MINDEF will continue to work with the U.S. Department of Defense to optimize operating and maintenance costs. The RSAF will take delivery of new helicopters from 2020 onwards. The H-225M medium lift and our Chinook heavy lift helicopters will replace our existing Super Pumas and our CH-47D fleets. These new helicopters will add capacity and be more effective in search and rescue or humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations. That's for the Air Force. Let me move on to the Navy. For the RSN, our submarines in operation are over two decades old. We will replace them with four new Invincible class submarines. The first was recently launched in Germany with the other three being built. The Invincible class submarines will have longer endurance and also the latest locally developed sensors and automated systems designed for optimal use in our surrounding waters. We've launched our submarines lately in, for in Kiel, facing the North Sea. We launched our previous class of submarines in the Baltic Sea. But you know, those cold waters there are much colder. So we have to optimize them for our warm waters here. We aim to have a full fleet of four Invincible class submarines by 2025. For surface ships, our aging missile corvettes have served with distinction since 1989. They are also pioneer generation and will have to be retired soon. And they will be replaced by the new multi-role combat vessels. The first of these will be delivered around 2025 with full delivery expected 2030. More than just improving capabilities, the new multi-role combat vessels will incorporate many new ideas. First of all, they will use less manpower. I think many MPs have pointed out, how do we deal with the one-third reduction in manpower? The MRCVs will use less manpower, about half the size of that found in modern frigates, which is quite an achievement. This is possible because we designed it from the onset, custom-built for lean manning, using technologies which automate many functions, including maintenance. And as a result, there's also a cost savings of up to 10% in operating them, compared to other similar-sized frigates. The MRCVs will also have unmanned air and sea drones. So it wouldn't be just a manned ship, it will have air and sea drones 
modular packages to extend their reach and flexibility against threats. Many of you are familiar with LSTs, our landing ship tanks. I think many of you have sailed on them, and they've proved their worth time and again. Each time we deploy them in exercises, we say, we're so grateful that we have this platform, so versatile, with and able to meet mission objectives. It's been the workhorse in our HADR efforts and other missions. The LSTs are aging too and will need to be replaced in the next decade by larger and more flexible joint multi-mission ships. 